At the beginning of the story shows two hitmen who were on a mission in Mexico. These two hitmen named Danny Brace and his partner named Hunter. It turns out that they are not just a partner. Hunter is very close to Danny. Even Danny has considered Hunter like his own biological brother. Here, they are not just two, but are assisted by two of Danny's friends named Davies and Meyer. It was known that their target was an official, and Danny immediately divided his group into two, himself and Hunter would attack the target from close range, while Davies and Meyer were assigned to guard from a distance, then pick him up when the target had been successfully eliminated. Danny accidentally saw a child in the target's car, which made him unfocused. As a result, Danny had to be shot in the hand. But luckily Hunter immediately took Danny then boarded Davies and Meyer's car, who had picked them up. On the way, Danny said that he would retire as a hitman and want to live a normal life like ordinary people. One year later, shows Danny who chooses to isolate himself by living quietly in the middle of the Australian forest. That morning, when Danny was washing his face, he suddenly received a letter. When opened, the letter contained a photo of Hunter being held captive in Omen. The letter also contained a message asking Danny to meet his old agent when Danny was still a hitman. Danny, who already considers Hunter as his own brother, without waiting long, he immediately goes to meet his agent. Once there, the agent asked Danny to get into the car. Here, the agent explained that Hunter had been kidnapped by an oil boss or Sheck in Omen. The oil boss deliberately kidnapped Hunter to make Danny to come to his place. If Danny didn't come there, then the oil boss would not hesitate to finish Hunter. Hearing this, Danny immediately went to Omen to save Hunter. Long story short, Danny has arrived at the oil boss's residence. Here, Danny had to be checked by some of the boss's men to make sure that Danny wasn't carrying any weapons. After that, Danny met the oil boss, who looked very old. Then the oil boss explained if he won't release Hunter as long as Danny would to work for him. Not only that, the oil boss will also give Danny a reward that is six million dollars. Hearing this, Danny asked what he should do. The oil boss then said that he wanted Danny to slaughter everyone who had killed his eldest son. It turned out that at that time during the guerrilla war, the oil boss's eldest son had to be killed by SAS troops. In fact, the oil boss's eldest son was just an ordinary citizen and didn't interfere with war affairs. The oil boss had received information that his eldest son was killed by three SAS troops. The oil boss asked Danny to eliminate the three SAS troops, who were now retired. And Danny's first mission was to kill one of the three SAS members named Stephen Harris. Danny agreed to the mission from the oil boss, but now Danny wants to meet first with the hunter, who they are holding. In the end, Danny was taken to Hunter's room. Upon arrival, Hunter was seen immediately hugging Danny, because it had been a long time since they had met. Here, Hunter asks Danny to just go and never obey the request of the oil boss. Hunter is also sincere and ready if he has to die here, as a punishment of his sins in the past. But of course, Danny wasn't going to let that happen. Quickly, Danny asked one of the guards to get him a drink, but when the guard returned, Danny immediately beat the guard. It turns out that at this time, Danny plans to take Hunter away from the place. But of course, it wasn't easy, because Danny had to face the oil boss's men. There was a fight between them. After a long battle, Danny and Hunter entered a room. But when they opened the door, Danny and Hunter were immediately shot at by two of the boss's men. There was also the boss's youngest son, Amur, applauding Danny. Here, Amur really salutes Danny's courage for trying to save Hunter. But Amir emphasized that it was all useless because outside there were hundreds of his men who were ready to open fire on Danny. So Danny should just obey what Amir's father or the oil boss wants, rather than Danny and Hunter having to die silly in this place. In the end, Danny asked Hunter to always take care of himself, because from now on he would be on a mission from the oil boss. The next day, Danny went to England to visit his two colleagues, Davies and Meyer. Upon arrival, Danny immediately said that he currently needed both of their help. Then Danny explained that Hunter was now being held captive by an oil boss from Omen. If Hunter wants to survive, then Danny must eliminate three former SAS members. Not only that, Danny will also be rewarded with $6 million, 
and Danny promises to share all the money equally if Davies and Meyer want to help him. Hearing that, Davies and Meyer wanted to help. Then Danny said that their first mission was to eliminate one of his three targets named Harris. Harris is a former SAS member who is now retired and lives in Omen. After everyone understood, the three of them immediately rushed to Omen to start their mission. Long story short, Danny and his team arrived in Omen. The three of them immediately spied on Harris's activities to start the action. The scene moves to a man named Spike Logan, who is currently contacting someone. It is known that Spike is the head of the former SAS veterans, who are assigned to protect all war veterans. Currently, Spike has received a report from his informant if there are three former SAS members being targeted by hitmen from America. Hearing this, Spike immediately went to discuss this matter with his other members. Here, Spike tells them that three of their colleagues are being hunted by hitmen. But unfortunately, the other members asked Spike not to respond to the problem, especially since there was no valid evidence. Hearing this, Spike became angry and hurried to leave, because now he would move alone. On the other hand, seeing Danny and his team buying some equipment from the locals. Here, Danny intends to kill Harris using broken tiles, so that the police will think that Harris died from hitting the bathroom tiles. Not long after that, Danny saw a flicker of light coming from the top of the hill. It turned out that the light came from the Spike's informant, who was looking for evidence of Danny and the team's crimes. Danny immediately realized this, and then fastly chased the informant. But unfortunately, the informant could escape through the underground hole he had made. Then Danny and the team decided to return to their mission, which was to finish Harris. Quickly, Danny and his two friends went straight to Harris' house, because today they would finish him off before it was too late. Not long after that, it shows Danny and the team who had succeeded in pointing a gun at Harris. Before being executed, Danny made a video confession first, if Harris had really killed the eldest son of the Omani oil boss during the guerrilla war. Danny did this on purpose, because the oil boss wanted a video confession before Harris was executed. Loudly, Harris said yes, because it was paid very dearly. Then Danny asked again, who was behind it all. Harris replied, if Danny could find out about it from a book, because the mastermind of it all was a famous writer. Then Danny's group immediately took Harris to the bathroom, because they were going to finish Harris off as if his head had been hit by the bathtub tiles. But when they want to start the action, suddenly the door was knocked. It turned out to be Harris's girlfriend. Danny will also keep an eye on Harris' girlfriend first, and if the woman forced her way in, Danny would also finish her off. But luckily, Harris' girlfriend left immediately when she found out the door to Harris' house was locked. Then Danny returned to the bathroom, and he saw Harris who had just been finished off by Meyer. The first mission was considered complete, so Danny and the team decided to leave there immediately. The next day, the scene switches to Spike, who has just received news that one of his veterans, Harris, has died in the bathroom. Spike is very sure that this is not an ordinary accident, but the work of the hitman he is looking for. On the other hand, showing Davies, Danny's partner, is currently visiting the residence of Spike's informant, who had spied on him yesterday. When the informant was caught off guard, Davies quickly finished him off by stabbing him while he was on the phone. After that, Davies took several important documents from the informant's house. One hour later, Davies was seen with Danny and Meyer. Here Davies said that the informant who had spied on them yesterday had been killed. Hearing this, of course Danny is very happy because now no one will spy on them anymore. At the same time, Danny gets his second target from the oil boss. The target was a former SAS member named Warwick Craig, and the oil boss immediately gave his detailed address. Danny and the team quickly went to Craig to spy on his activities first. Here, Danny sees that Craig often goes back and forth to the hospital to see his wife. Then Danny decides to disguise himself as a doctor, because he intends to kill Craig by poisoning him. But unfortunately, Danny had to be caught by Spike, so Danny immediately fled by car. After a long chase, Danny entered an empty building, and here there was a fight between the two of them. They look equally strong, but in the end, Danny could make Spike helpless by hitting his groin. However, Danny chose not to kill Spike, because Spike was not part of his target.
After that, Danny went to Davies and Meyer to discuss how to finish off Craig, the second target. Currently, Craig is no longer in the hospital, because now Craig must lead the training of the active SAS group. The only way to finish him off is get into the SAS headquarters, then they will poison Craig inside that place. In the end, Danny, Davies, and Meyer agreed, so they quickly went to the SAS headquarters. Upon arrival, Danny will go inside, then disguise himself as an SAS member who will take part in training. As for Davies and Meyer, Danny was instructed to watch him from a distance and make distraction if anything happened. A few minutes later, Danny is seen successfully disguised, then sprinkling poison in Craig's coffee. After that, Danny participates in the training led by Craig by walking in the snowfall. The snow disrupts everyone's view, so make Craig walks alone. It wasn't long before the toxic effects of the coffee kicked in. Craig immediately fell down. Danny quickly went to Craig and didn't forget to record it. Here Danny asks Craig to admit if he was involved in the murder of the oil boss's eldest son. Craig, who was already helpless, finally admitted it all, then he died. Danny immediately sent the recording to the oil boss, so he was very satisfied to see Danny's great performance. On the other hand, it shows Spike who just got the news about Craig's death. Spike is certainly getting more and more angry, and he promises to catch Danny and his colleagues soon. The scene returns to Danny, who is meeting with his agent. Here, the agent provides data on the third target for Danny from the oil boss. The agent said that the oil boss was sick, so he was assigned by the oil boss to give this data to Danny. It turns out that Danny's next target is a former SAS member named Simon McCann. If Danny could to finish Simon and send video evidence to the oil boss, then Danny's mission is complete. The oil boss also promised to immediately release Hunter, Danny's best friend, and also give $6 million. The next day, Danny was seen contacting a woman. It turns out that the woman is Anne Frazier, who is Danny's girlfriend. Here, Anne asks when Danny will return to Australia, because she already misses Danny very much. Danny promised that he would be home soon. After that, Danny immediately met with Davies and Meyer to start watching Simon, their last target. Then when they stalked him, Danny and the team saw Simon fighting with the bad men who parked carelessly in front of the house. Then Danny also saw Spike who suddenly came and separated Simon. Feeling that the situation was not conducive, Danny and the team decided to return to their bases. Upon arrival at the bases, Danny immediately set a strategy to finish Simon off by making it look like he died in a car accident. After that, Danny and the team immediately bought a truck, and they modified it in such a way. Later, this truck will be used to crash Simon's car, and ensure Simon will die on the spot. And Danny also hired a driver named Jake to watch Simon's car from a close distance with Meyer. The next day, Danny and his team went into action. Davies was in charge of observing the situation from a distance, while Meyer and the driver would follow Simon's car from a close distance, while Danny himself would drive the truck. Until their action began. When the tanker truck was right on the road, Simon's car crashed at high speed. As a result, Simon was successfully eliminated in the incident. But unfortunately, there was one of the SAS members who was watching Meyer's actions from earlier. Meyer, who didn't want any witnesses, decided to chase the SAS member. Until there was a chase. The chase stopped at a pier, and Meyer immediately pointed a gun at the SAS member. However, the member fought back and choked Meyer. The driver who saw this incident, he also intended to shoot the SAS member from behind. But unfortunately, the bullet hit Meyer's head. As a result, the SAS member and Meyer had to die at the same time. After that, the driver reported all the events just now to Danny, and Danny was very angry because one of his colleagues had to die. The scene moves to Spike, who has just heard the news about Simon's death. Here, Spike is really very angry because he has lost many of his members. Quickly, Spike immediately asked for help from active SAS members to hunt down Danny and his team. It didn't take long for two SAS members to raid Davies who was having sex in a hotel. Then they immediately took Davies to be handed over to Spike. But here Davies tries to escape by running into the middle of the road. Until in the end Davies had to die very badly. 
Then the two men handed Davy's body to Spike. They also gave a number found on Davy's jacket. After that, Spike decided to go home. But upon arriving home, Spike was immediately shot at by Danny. Here, Danny reminds Spike once again not to interfere in his business. If Spike dares to show up again, then Danny will not hesitate to finish Spike off. The next day, Danny is seen returning to Omen to visit the oil boss. Here, Danny asks the oil boss to release Hunter and give him six million dollars, because now all his missions have been completed. The oil boss was very satisfied with Danny's performance, and of course he would keep all his promises. Then the oil boss released Hunter, and he would transfer the six million dollars after making sure that the three targets were completely killed. In the end, Danny could save Hunter. Then they left immediately. The next day, it shows Danny who has just arrived in Australia, and he immediately meets Anne, his girlfriend. Here Danny promises that he will never leave Anne again, because all his work has been completed. In the evening, Danny is suddenly contacted by Mur, the youngest son of the oil boss. Amur said that Danny had to kill one more person. He was the mastermind behind the people who had killed the eldest son of the oil boss. If Danny refuses, then Amur will not hesitate to kill Anne, Danny's girlfriend. As the first threat, Amur has stored a bullet in Anne's side. Swiftly, Danny went straight to Anne, who was asleep. Sure enough, there was a bullet in Anne's side, according to what Amur said earlier. That night, Danny immediately took Anne to Paris to be entrusted to Hunter. Upon arrival, Danny asked Hunter to look after Anne, because now he would return again to carry out a mission from the oil boss. Long story short, now Danny is in London to meet Amir first at a hotel, before carrying out the mission. Arriving at the hotel, Danny immediately beat up several of Amir's men who want to check on him. Then Danny met with Amir, and Amir immediately explained that Danny's target this time was a writer named Ranulf Fiennes. Ranulf himself is the mastermind behind the murder of Amir's brother or the eldest son of the oil boss. If Danny could finish Ranulf, then Amur promises never bother Danny again and transfer his six million dollars. After that, Danny rushes off to go to Ranulf, the last target. On the other hand, it shows Spike who is meeting with active SAS members. Here, Spike asks them all to catch Danny, who may now be targeting Ranulf the writer. Spike himself knows that Ranulf is Danny's last target, because Spike knows that Ranulf is the mastermind behind the murder of the oil boss' eldest son. Spike will protect Ranulf, because after all, Ranulf is a former SAS member that he must protect. Then Spike and his members immediately took Ranulf to the protection building. Spike had also set up a trapped bomb on the door in case Danny actually came to the building. Not long after, a man wearing a helmet arrived, and Spike realized that it was Danny. Spike let Danny open the door, until there was an explosion. It turns out that the person is not Danny, but Danny's driver, Jake, who accidentally shot Meyer. Danny himself apparently could enter from another door, until he got to Ranulf's room, his last target. Then, without further ado, Danny immediately finished Ranulf by shooting him, then Danny escaped through the window. Spike, who just realized that Danny had finished Ranulf, he immediately instructed all his members to chase Danny. Until there was a chase. In the end, Danny was surrounded, so he had to be caught. Then Danny was interrogated by Spike. Even Spike plans to finish Danny off. But suddenly, there was a member of the SAS who betrayed, then pointed a gun at Spike and also Danny. It turned out that the man wanted $6 million from the oil boss, which he thought was in Danny's account. But luckily Danny was able to fight back, even though he was tied up. Then Danny escaped by jumping from the window. After that, Spike immediately finished off the member who had betrayed him. The next day, showed Spike coming to Omen to meet the oil boss. Without saying much, Spike immediately killed the oil boss in front of Amir, his youngest son. Spike did this in revenge for his four colleagues who had been killed by Danny. Seeing this, Amar is even happy, because from now on all the oil boss's wealthy will fall to him. Even Amir also gave a six million dollar prize to Spike, for finishing off his father, which we know if the money was supposed to be for Danny. Spike casually rushed home while carrying a suitcase of money, but without Spike realizing it, apparently he had been watched by Danny and Hunter.
Then Danny immediately chased Spike. On the way, Danny hit Spike's car with a shot, making him stop. Then Danny held Spike at gunpoint, then asked him to hand over the money because it should belong to Danny. Spike didn't want to die, so he gave his suitcase to Danny. But Hunter, who is not crazy about money, he also leaves some of the money for Spike. With that, they are now reconciled and promise never to interfere with Danny or Hunter again. And then, they went their separate ways. A few days later, shown Danny picking up his girlfriend Anne. Now Danny promises if he will never leave Anne again, and will live forever with Anne. After that, the movie ended.